Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Pattaya, the show where we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information, and advice. Now, today joining me on the sofa is Bob from Maggie Mays. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Trevor. Have you touched your balls in? I've touched them in. Touched you sure? I've touched them in. Just before yeah. we went on camera, he says, Oh, I better check, check my balls on hanging out. I mean, what kind of thing is that to well, say? Yeah, when you get to my age, they hang a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> and they're around your kneecap. Yeah. <laughs> now, before we talk about Maggie Mays and everything that you've done, I mean, where are you originally from, Bob? I'm from a place called Huddersfield in York. Huddersfield. Huddersfield in Yorkshire, good old Huddersfield. Oh, yes. fantastic. Now I've got some very good friends in Home Firth. Oh, right, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Land of, uh, last of the summer wine country. Well, I've got some, uh, uh, some really, really, like almost, I'll call them family to be fair, and they live in Home Firth. You know the river that runs through the sure, bridges? Yeah. Yeah. There's some, uh, is it, am I right to think, I think there's two Indians in Home Firth, two Indian restaurants. Okay, I'm not sure. I've been to one of them. Many, many years. I've been to one of them. I mean, obviously, a, a bit cold back home rather than it is here. Yeah, well, I would imagine so. I've not been back for a long time. Have you not? No. <laughs> I mean, when you say back, I mean, what did you do back in in, uh, in Huddersfield? Uh, well, I was a, I was a sales rep for a hire company for okay. quite a few years, and uh, I also had a pub as well. So I had a pub in a place called Greenland near Halifax, okay. the Golden Fleece, uh, for three years. Yeah. But in that three years as well, I was working as well. So I was doing two jobs in a day and. Eventually, when I, I got rid of the pub, I was pretty exhausted. Yeah, don't know. So I'd had enough, and a friend of mine, Tom O'Donnell, you cheers, Tom, uh, said, Would you like to go to Thailand? So, is he responsible for getting He certainly yeah. is. Is yeah. certainly is. Tom, look what you've done to the game. Yeah, if you've never you? been over, wants to see me again. You need to come back, my friend. Now, nah, listen, come on. You, know, you can't <laughs> bring him over here. Dump him over here for Talk 17 me, years yeah. and yeah. only come out once. Come yeah. on, Tom, sort yourself out, son. Get over it. <laughs> And I mean, before you came over here, obviously you've been here 17 years. I mean, when you were back in, in the, in the uh, trade, in the pub game, etc., I mean, did you ever visualize that you would be here working in this industry for 17 years? Did you ever think that would actually um, happen? No, I never envisaged uh, being here for 17 years and in this game, to be fair. But yeah. I've always been in uh, what they can call the people game, you know? Yeah. Um, whether you're in sales or whether you've got a bar or whatever, I've always been in, on that side of it, yeah. if you know what I mean. So, no, I never envisaged this, believe me. <laughs> no, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Oh, isn't it, Justin? I mean, 17 years ago, I mean, I've only been coming here for, well, I've been living here 10, here coming here 12. 17 years ago, I mean, how much different was it then to what it is now? Well, uh, a lot different, mm. to be fair. But when, when, I, when we first hit Thailand, me and Tom hit Don Mawang taxi. Yeah, John Don Mawang actually. The first, Don Mawang, my the lord. First, the first beer I ever had in Thailand was just on the road that goes down to John Tien Beach. Yeah, there was Chibai a little Road. Bar on the right side there. We dropped our rucksacks off and we had a, a, a singer beer and it was 70 baht then, Trevor. Se 17 70 years ago it was 70 baht then. Wow. So don't complain about your prices of beer. <laughs> I mean, you, you went to John Tien, but you didn't actually stay around here, did you? You went off to, no, to we, other parts. No, we did, uh, I think, maybe three or four days here. We had a couple of days in, in Patea, yeah. in Soy Six, yeah. in the early days, but I never really had a chance to to, to, to see uh, Soy Six and Patea yeah. because we had a friend in Koh Samui, so we uh, went to Otapau and flew off down to Koh Samui and met up with a, a good friend of ours, Mike, God rest his soul. And I mean, you know, when you say you came here 17 years ago, you, you know, you went through Don Juan, I mean, oh, God. What? I'll tell you what guys, if you haven't been through Don Moran back in the day, you are so lucky because I promise you it was an absolute oh, awful, you awful. You need a shave when you finish. Oh, when it, you know, you, you'd land, you get all excited, think, right, I'm here, I'm here, let's go, let's go. And you go through all the, the, the baggage in and collect your stuff and all the rest of it. And then you'd just be sitting in hours of traffic. Yeah. Just hours and yes. hours and yes. hours. Yes. And you'd be thinking, this is crazy. I think that was before the bypass movie. Yeah, God, cool, yeah, I think so too. I mean, when you came came over here, I mean, did you have any expectations? Had anybody said to you, oh, when you go over there, it's going to be this, this, and this? Or was it just literally, let's pack a bag and let's have a go? Well, that, that's where me and Tom used to do it. We were both single guys and that, so we we did, uh, we, we did Dublin a few times. Oh, Dublin, Temple We did Bar. Egypt, yeah, yeah, we did all, we did, we did, we were single guys and we had a few cash, a bit of cash on the hips. Yeah. We did some great stuff. But the, the Thailand one was a, a bit different, because once we got down to Koh Samui, I just loved it. Yeah. I just, I remember being, we were at uh, Lamai Wanta Hotel. Yeah, Lamai. And we were at just, at just arms on the uh, the edge of the pool looking over the sea. 
Yeah. We looked at each other and went, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Le Mans and Chuang were my two favourites. Yeah, I mean, they were brilliant. Beautiful places, beautiful places. But uh, when it, then we went to go back home, obviously. So when I went back home, I packed in my job. I'd already sold the pub. Um, and I was back in Thailand 13 days later. And I've 13? Only ever, I've only ever been back once since, and that was... Um, I was back in the UK when the tsunami hit in 2004. Oh, wow. And wow. that's the last time I've been back to the UK. And I mean, when you went back, I'm guessing you went back to Huddersfield, correct? I went, it's a place called Ellen, in, yeah. between Halifax and Huddersfield. Okay, so you were in, I mean, when you went back after all those years, when you walked down the high street and into, your, into what was probably your local back in the day. That was a pub I owned. I mean, when you walked in, I mean, what was the feeling like? Well, it, that, that was only nine months after that left the first time so realistically I, I haven't been back for 16 and a half years wow. really so all I get to see out about the change back in the UK is what people tell me and you know for the first 10 12 years people were saying to me come on Bob you've had your fun now mm. you've had your bit of a laugh come back let's get let's get going back on track and now I'll be perfectly honest with you over the last two years they're saying the opposite they're saying I wish I was there with you yeah they really are I mean that they're, they're um, you know, especially with what's going on with the COVID and things like that. And yeah. The way Thailand's dealt with it has been superb, to be fair. So it has been good, hasn't it? I mean, mm. To be honest with you, I mean, they. I know some people are disgruntled with the fact we've gone into a new lockdown at the time we're making this video. We're in lockdown again, but like you said, they have done a really good job. Excellent. I think personally. Yeah, me personally. Too. Yeah, no, I think. Yeah. So in Koh Samui, I mean, where else have you been? Because you've you've done a bit around uh, Thailand, haven't you? It's not just Koh Samui. Well. Look, when I knew I was doing this interview, I had to work out my time scales. And I, I did, uh, He's been there rehearsing. Now, where did I, I go from there to there well, to I did, there? I think it was just short two years in Samoa. I did 13 years in Hawaii and then two years in Batay. 13 years in Hawaii? Yeah, yeah. Why did you go to Hawaii? Um, golf. Of all. Oh, well, okay. Well, there's two reasons. One, there was a guy chasing me with a gun in Samoa, <laughs> which I had to get out. So... Do you know uh, what, right? when I do golf. these chats, I get all kinds of things <laughs> thrown at me. I'm sitting here and you're telling me now that you've got like someone chasing you with a gun. Yeah, that's a, it's a lovely story. But, go uh, on, do you want to share would it? You want to, yeah, go on, let, let's share it, go on. Well, this story goes to the guy's called Chip Shop Dave. Chip Shop Dave. Pompey Dave, his name was lovely like that. But he, he went out on a bender and I think he was he used to like other substances as well, you yeah. know. <laughs> Three day bender and he pulls up outside the bar and he drops his phantom down without the stand and just drops it on the floor. Yeah. yeah to call everybody F's and C's and stuff like that, you know. And uh, me with my Yorkshire sense of humour, I said, oh, I think you need a bit of anger management there, you know. <laughs> so did well, you get a gun I, out? I, I never thought no more about it. And then the next day, my girlfriend was cashier at the bar and she came She came back to the house, came running and she goes, come on, we've got to go, we've got to go. I said, what do you mean? She said, quick, quick, quick. So I get out of bed and grab the car keys, we jump in the car, get halfway around the island. I said, well, what's going on? She says, oh, Dave's come looking for you a gun. So he's come in the bar, wanting to know where I live, and he's got a, duck, a, a gun tucked down his pants as he lifts his shirt, and she's been freaked out. No. So we stopped at a friend's house, and the next morning I, uh, I phoned him up. I said, Dave, what's going on, you know? Yeah. I said, Bob, you know what I'm like when I've been on my benders. He says, you should just ignore me. Well, I says, <laughs> ignore me, you said, with a, with a gun I says, your pants. you've got a gun down your pants, and you want to know where I live. <laughs> and he goes, oh, don't worry about the gun, Bob. He says, I had no bullets for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes okay. it all okay. <laughs> that's different, that's different. All right, so, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, not, not your everyday situation. No, no, not it? every day. That was, I mean, that was the, the straw that brought the camels back, really, because yeah. I was already, I liked my golf at the time as well, and golf was so expensive on course, yeah. so, and I've come up to Y in a few times, and the golf was good there, so, that was one of the reasons, and we chase after Biden. Yeah, so. I mean, are you still good friends now, or is that like... Uh, the street, when I left, I had, a, I had a bit of a do in the bar, yeah. from a leaving do, and he gave me <laughs> he a... He gave in? He, he gave me a present, yeah, he gave me a present, <laughs> what, and he said... Six rounds? Don't unwrap, <laughs> <laughs> don't unwrap that till you get on the ferry. Okay. I was, I was like, we get on the ferry, and the, uh, the girlfriend had got it in the bag, she goes, oh, here's that thing. So I opened it up, and it was like a box, and I thought, oh, what this is, and it turns out it's just a DVD. And it was a DVD of anger management with Jack Nicholson. You know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it was all, it all it worked out okay. Brilliant. And I mean, in Hohin, I mean, what did you do there? I mean, um, golf. I started playing golf, and I wanted to try and start some sort of golf society up. Yeah. Uh, and it it was tough without having a bar, really. Okay. In what way? I didn't. Well, you needed a base. You needed somewhere okay. where people could meet and everything. And something came up. It was a massage parlour and. 
playing golf with a good friend of mine, Magnus, God bless him. Um, he says, oh, there's a, a ma massage coming up near my bar. He says, would you be interested? I said, oh, I don't want a massage for you, to make it to a bar, you know, Yeah. to go with your golf. So I, I bought that for absolute peanuts and me and my girlfriend at the time then, um, knock, we opened that Bob and Knox and that was, that was good for six and a half years and we did that really, really well out of it. Oh, brilliant. But she then left me. Oh, no. She ran off with my best friend. Ex-best friend. I do miss him. <laughs> Ex-best friend. I miss him. <laughs> I mean, in, you say about your golf, I mean, are you a keen golfer then, I guess? I was, but I'm, I'm, I'm no good. What, did, what was your best least. handicap? You my best I ever got to was 15. 15? Fair that's play. Well, that, that's about 45 better than me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, trees, bushes, lakes, you name it. I mean, there are some beautiful golf courses here, aren't there? Yeah, there is stunning golf courses. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, guys, if you're watching the channel and you are into your golf, I mean, honestly, like, like Bob says, this really could be a, a it, well it is, it's a golf haven, is it? Just oh, incredible. Oh, the moment, some fantastic incredible. offers as well. Yeah. Great offers now, so. Mm. So, from the golf course, into a bar, in Hawhin, mm -hmm. and, I mean, any regrets, anything you'd look back and think, you know, I wish I didn't do that, or I wish uh, I'd done this? Well, look, you know, I've thought about this before as well, and I thought, well, I've no major regrets. Well, the, the major regret I have is that I miss my family dearly, you know. I'm yeah, yeah, I understand. Mentor, so. I totally get that. Um, uh, no, not really, because I'm, I'm always uh, my glasses are full, happy guy, you know. Yeah. So I don't, I don't let things get to me really. And uh, no, I've loved pretty much every minute of it. Oh, There's been ups and downs, and yeah, like sure. everybody has. Ups and downs, ins and outs. Yeah, Ooh, plenty of ins and outs. <laughs> <laughs> I mom, mean. Mom, mom. <laughs> I mean, in terms of like, you know, obviously 17 years, so, you know, you, you, you know the, the area, you know about this place. I mean, where is, in your opinion, the best place that you've ever been to and why? You know, where's one place you think, do you know what, I went there, it was just absolutely amazing, but why? Are you talking about anything? Or anything, anything. The, where, where, the, where, the, where the, the best, best place I visited was uh, Kanchanaburi. Oh, right, was, yeah. Uh, the Warmer 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. That was pretty, pretty moving place, and it's yeah. a stunning place. And the golf course was great, so everything was there for me. It was good. Yeah. yeah Have you ever been to Kokud? No, I haven't. Have you that. not? No. Oh, guys, if you've been to Kokud, drop a comment below. It's, it's just picture postcard beautiful. Mm. It really is absolutely stunning. I want to go to Koh Chang. Uh, yeah. Go around and there see Kevin's place. I don't know if you know Kevin Lantern. Has. I don't know. Yeah, Kevin German guy. He's got a lovely place around there, right on the beach. Has he? You walk out of your thing onto the beach and there's a park. When I get a bit of time off, I'll go around there. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, you say back in Huddersfield, in, well, near Huddersfield, you were running your bar, etc. I mean, I guess it, uh, the question I have to ask you is, running a bar in England to running a bar out here, I mean, let's take the, the, the girl aspect out of it. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about the actual nuts and bolts of running a bar. I mean, do they differ greatly? Is, it, is there a lot different going yeah, on? Yeah, they do. They, they, it's, it's not... It's, I think it's tougher in the UK really because of all the paperwork and the ins and outs and the messing around and your taxing and your ordering and I, I when I say I own the pub I, I own the lease but I work yeah. for a company called Enterprise Inns so, and to be honest they're the worst people in the world so they're, they're one of these people <laughs> I apologise to any Enterprise Inns yes <laughs> please don't apologise <laughs> no they're, they're not good people to work for and if you're the lease and, and it was okay for me because I was a single guy and I, uh, I still had a job as well yeah so the income from the pub really wasn't that essential to me. I was, I was still earning decent wages, so I, I literally it was my local pub, and it was a fifty pound bet. So we bet me fifty quid that I wasn't because the well they were going to close it down. We were having a bit of a lock in being two guys. And yeah, this the guy says, "Oh, I've, I've got to leave because he was looking after a few more pubs, and if he didn't get get rid of the pub, they were going to pull the pin on the other pubs." And he says, "I've got to leave, guys. I says, I've got nobody to take over." And one guy says. Well, you have it, Bob. I said, what the hell do I have? Well, we'll lose our local pub if you don't. He said, I bet you 50 quid, man. By this time, I had about 12 pints of beer. <laughs> and uh, I shook hands, and the next day I was signing the cheque for 12 grand for the for the lease of the pub. So, wow. And I had that for three years, but no regrets there. And did right? you get 50 quid? I got my 50 quid, yes, <laughs> yes, and more. Brilliant. And, uh, yeah. I mean, people that, that have never run a, a bar, especially like myself, you know, I've never run a pub, never run a bar, etc., wouldn't even know where to start. I mean, what are the, 
we kind of like from the outside looking in, we see like the glory scene, you know, you're, you're sat there at the end of your bar having your beer, you, you, the customers are coming in. I mean, how hard is it really? I mean, it must be a lot, lot harder than it actually looks from the outside looking in. I think you have to, you have to be a certain animal to do it, really. You have to, you have to do a certain thing about it. I mean, they used to say about the old pot landlords in the UK that you hear everything and you say nothing. Okay. You know, and uh, like in sales as well, they say to be a decent salesman or a good salesman, people used to say you need the gift of the gap. That's absolute rubbish. Right? Yeah. You I need to be able to listen. You need to be able to listen. Exactly. You understand yeah. that. Two ears, one mouth is That's always the best way around. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, back in the UK, I'm guessing you didn't have many teapot contributions to have to make like you do out here. No, <laughs> no, no Tetley's Brigade, anything like that. Yeah. Tetley's no, PG no, tips, no, like that. Every, every now and then the local Bobby would pop in and I give him half a pint of bitter. And that I mean, up north, what is it? Is it Tetley's or PG tips? What's your, what was the brew? Oh, Yorkshire then? tea, come on. Yorkshire, Yorkshire tea. Oh, sorry. Come on, come if I've offended you now about your tea bags, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I must admit, though, over here, if you don't go to like the expat shops to get your proper tea, the tea mm. is rank, you know, and it really is awful. I mean, I'm running short now, so all you guys that are coming over, <laughs> you need to bring me some more. But people used to bring me, that's what they used to bring me, tea bags. Right, so boys, you're going to Maggie Mays, bring bags of tea bags with you. Yorkshire tea bags. Bro. Yorkshire tea bags, and Bob will take care of you, all right? Yeah. We'll, we'll, oh, we'll yes, leave it at that. Right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. He might have a little nudge and a wink with somebody, and they'll come and make sure that those tea bags are well reciprocated, don't worry. I mean, obviously coming out here, I mean, what, What's been your biggest challenge living in Thailand in terms of understanding the culture, understanding the, the language, understanding the way the people are here? I mean, what have you found to be the biggest challenge? Well, you, I don't, I, you can't let it get to you. Mm -hmm. You can't let it get to you. Some things you just can't laugh at from your shoulders because... <laughs> and you end up laughing at day, don't you? I never thought I'd myself <laughs> saying this, but sort of step out of the box type thing, yeah. have a look at it and yeah. you think, well, you know, like I mean, with this COVID situation, you know, people in the UK pop, pop down the road and sign on the dot line and get yeah, a check. Yeah, yeah. Not here, yeah. they don't get that. You know, you don't work if you don't work, you starve. You know. Yeah. And if you, if you look at it at the bigger picture, then yeah, you can you, you can understand how, how it works. And it does work. As an employer back in England, to employing out here, I mean, do you find the Thai time is a little bit difficult to, to master? You know, yeah. can you be here at nine o'clock? Can and then at twenty past nine. Hello, where are you? Yeah, I come yeah. soon. But it's nine o'clock. Yeah, can come. Uh, but my, I've worked that out now. No, you asked him for two well, hours before. Well, if, <laughs> if you want them to come at nine o'clock yeah. and they come at five to ten, <laughs> they're not late. Because it's still part of nine o'clock. Yeah, it's not yeah. ten o'clock yet. So. Yeah. That's only my work. Here. See, now that is 17 years <laughs> of experience of understanding exactly what you just said then. Mm. Nine is nine to 9.59 and 59 seconds. That still is nine. Still You're is. absolutely spot on. I mean, when you've come over here, you know, now you're at Maggie Mays. I mean, we're going to touch on Maggie Mays a lot more in part two and talk about, you know, the running of Maggie Mays and where you are, what kind of things you experience, you know, what kind of establishment it is, etc., etc. How did you get into Maggie Mays? How did that come about? Um, I was living across the road at oh, right. a bar called De Facto's. I'd uh, worked at the corner bar for a few months and that didn't work out. And I was staying at De Facto's and just saw and one guy says, uh, Steve over at Maggie Mays is, is looking for the guy to open there. So I uh, I went over and I met Steve and we sat and the rest is history. The rest right? is history. Yeah, yeah. Really. Well, let's not talk about that okay. yet because we're going to talk about that in part two. Um, I mean, before we wrap up, we're getting to the end now, nearly of part one. It's been brilliant talking to you. I mean, 17 years here. Most of that, ironically, has not been in Patea. No, no, no. Well, I said most of it's been in Wahin. But yeah, yeah, I have been around to Patea on my old golf trip and things like that. And I mean, let's just say, like I said to you, right, okay, next month, you've got a whole month off to do whatever you want. Would you go back to Wahin or would you stay here or would, is there other places you would go to? Uh, like I said earlier, I'd love to go to Koh Chan. Probably why, because I've got lots of friends around there and lots of people I've met for years, known for years. Yeah. Um, uh, possibly even Koh Samui again, going Koh Samui, yeah. down there. So there's still a few guys still standing around there. So. Do you know what I got yeah. scammed? The biggest scam I ever got done was in was in Koh Chang. And oh, you know when, uh, not Koh Chang, sorry, in Koh Samui. You know when you go to the airport? Yep. Yeah. So I was staying over there for a while. God's honest truth is this guy, what a brilliant scam this was. And, and we're, we're talking about Thai mentality. So I'd hired a Jeep. Anyway, I had this Jeep. I met some friends and uh, we were just hanging around. Anyway, they were due to fly back. So I said, well, look, guys, I've got a Jeep. Chuck your cases in there. I'll take you down to the airport. No dramas. You know, I'll drop you off, etc." So when we got there, as you know, the airport was just like a hut. And there was a guy, a policeman, stood in the middle of the road. Now, normally, you would park on the right-hand side where the actual airport hut was. 
he directed me over to the left hand side where look, look a coach car park and I'm like oh okay whatever so anyway so I pulled over we've got out the jeep We've gone over, we sat down, they've checked in, etc, etc. So we had a couple of beers before they, they flew off. And anyway, I said, right, see you lads, thanks very much. Lovely to meet you, please stay in touch, etc, etc. So I walks over to my Jeep, and lo and behold, I had four flat tyres. It was incredible, like, not just one, one. not two, I had four flat tyres. But here's the best part, as if luck wouldn't be on my side, all of a sudden I can hear this, e, e, e. So what on earth that? I looked round, there was two little kids, with an air compressor on the wheels, it was squeaky wheels, wheeling round and he went, Mister, Mister, you need air? And I looked at him and I just giggled <laughs> and I thought, you absolute rogues, you've done me, you've let me tyres down and suddenly when I've come back, hey Mister, you need any air? Well I'll tell you what kids, you ain't no Sherlock Holmes working yeah. that one out, were they? It must have been from Liverpool. <laughs> oh don't, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, no, 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 sorry. But no, I had no, no uh, cup caps. I was you've right. got a mile of tenacity, haven't you? You've it was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of my favourite memories of being here in, in the years I've been here was that moment when they walked round. I could hear a squeaky wheel and it was because it was flat and they were yeah. just wheeling it round. Eek, 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 and they went, Mr, Mr, you need air. And I'm looking at four flat tyres going, now how did you work that out, boys? And they're only Do you remember how much it cost you? you I gave them 100 baht. Yeah. I gave them 100 baht. It's 25 baht a wheel. That's just awesome. Yeah, and I probably need a uh, new air in your tyres anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah, there was a bit old. We need yeah, to put some petrol in. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, listen, it's been absolutely fantastic talking to you. It really, really has. Guys, you know, please watch part two. We're going to dig down, and I've got a couple of surprises up my sleeve. I know he's been worrying about it. He's been rehearsing, like, what questions I may or may not ask him, and I didn't even tell you. So, how did you get with that? Um, oh, I've been sat upstairs, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> You've been watching all the other videos, didn't you? I've watched the other videos, videos. <laughs> yeah, I watch how it works. I thought I'd been nervous, but to be honest, no, you're a great guy. No, you've been easy, man. Absolutely. It's been, it's been brilliant, it's been brilliant. And I've got my cider. So. And he's got his cider, there you go. See, I've got a bottle of water, you've got your cider. Which one of us has got this wrong? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You swap jobs. <laughs> Indeed, with you. Well, listen, it's been fantastic, yeah. my friend. Thank you, nice Thank you so much, thank nice you so much. An absolute pleasure. Right, guys, so that's it from today on the Coffee Chat Show. Please remember, as always, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when I bring out a new video. Guys, check out our members area room. We're going around lots and lots of businesses getting discounts for you, so your membership will be pretty much free gratis. Uh, please check out the link in the description below and join our Telegram group. We've got over 2,000 people in there now, all like-minded people just like yourself that love talking about potato and all the other things that are going on. And don't forget, guys, Friday, this man, part two, let's find out all about potato. And I've got a couple of hidden extras up my sleeve. Speak to you soon, guys, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe.